name is Miss Paige, and I'm so excited that you decided to join us today to hear our story. We're going to be looking at Genesis 27 to 28. So if you have a Bible near you, go ask someone and open it up and try to find where that is. We're going to follow along with the story, and you can see where that story is playing along as well. And I encourage you to read that later in the week with someone. But our story is going to be about Jacob and Esau. And if you've been with us and following along, we've been following along with Abraham's family. The reason why is the Lord made a promise to him, a covenant and agreement. And he was saying he's going to bless his family, make them numerous. And we've known that Jesus is going to come through this family line. And so we're continuing to see God's character and the way he fulfills his promises to Abraham's family. So we had Abraham and Sarah, and then they had Isaac. And then Isaac and Rebekah, they had Jacob and Esau. And these are these two brothers, and we're continuing to watch the Lord say he's going to fulfill his promises through their family line. But our last story, Esau sold his birthright to Jacob, and so now Jacob is supposed to receive this blessing. And so we're going to look at Jacob and Esau, and Isaac is coming to a point where he is getting old and about to die. And so let's see what happens in the story. So go ahead and get your listening ears on. So when Isaac was old, he could not see. He called for his older brother, his older son, Esau. Go hunting and make a meal for me, he said. I want to bless you before I die. So Esau went out to hunt. Because Esau was the older brother, he was supposed to receive the blessing. Things were supposed to come through him. But we saw that the last week in our story, and you can go back and listen to it, that Jacob was receiving the birthright. And so Rebecca heard Esau and Isaac, Esau and Isaac talking, and she made her own plan because she knew what had happened previously in the story. And we're going to see, even though things are happening and um, that are different than what maybe they Esau had planned or Isaac, we see that God is still faithful. And our big picture question is, does God keep his promises? And yes, God always keeps his promises. He promises because he is faithful. And so let's continue on and get your listening ears on. So Rebecca heard Isaac and Esau talking, and she made her own plan. Rebecca told her younger son, Jacob, I will make your father's favorite meal and take the food to your father so that he may bless you before he dies. Jacob did what Rebecca said, and Rebecca put Esau's clothes on Jacob and covers his hands and neck with goat hair so that Isaac would think Jacob was Esau. Because remember, Esau was a hairy, um, in the last story we talked about, he was hairy, and so Jacob was a smooth skin, it wasn't the same. And so they had to kind of deceive to make Isaac think that it was Esau. And so Jacob went to take the meal to his father, and Isaac asked, who are you, my son? I am Esau, your firstborn, Jacob said. Isaac asked Jacob to come closer. He felt Jacob's hands. The voice is the voice of Jacob, but the hands are the hands of Esau, Isaac said. And Jacob brought his father food and drink, and he ate. And after the meal, Isaac kissed him and offered him the blessing. And the blessing included lands, riches, and power. And then Jacob left. About this time, Esau came home. Remember, he was going to go hunt some game to bring it back for his father to receive this blessing. And when he gave the food to Isaac, his father told him that he had been tricked and Jacob had been given the blessing. And Esau begged his father to bless him too, but Isaac had nothing left to give. And Esau was angry and he made a plan to kill Jacob. And Isaac and Rebekah sent Jacob away to stay with relatives. Remember, Rebecca, she had come from a, a land that was the land of Abraham and Sarah. And so when she married Isaac, there was a family back there in the land of Haran. And so they sent Jacob away to be with his relatives. And they told him to find a wife. Again, we're talking about this family line continuing. So he needed to find a wife so he could have children and the family line could continue. We see Esau being upset, but Esau gave his birthright away to Isaac, gave his birthright away right away to Jacob and so this is something he had given away so Jacob received the blessing and he went away and so on the way to Rebecca's family he and to their relatives Jacob stopped to sleep and he put a stone under his head of, um, as a pillow and Jacob had a dream of a stairway sent on the ground with his top reaching the sky angels were going up and down the stairs so this is a dream he's having and then God spoke to Jacob I am the God of your grandfather Abraham and the God of your father Isaac. I will give you and your offering this off, offspring this land. Again, that's God continually. He always is reminding these people of his promises that he's fulfilling it. Hey, look, I am the God of your grandfather Abraham, and I am the God of your God Isaac, God of your father Isaac, and you've seen me continuing to hold my promises to them, and I am faithful to them, and I will be faithful to you now that you will receive um, the family line as it continues to go down. And he gave Jacob the same covenant he made with Abraham. And God told Jacob that his family would be like the dust of the earth, 
they would spread out in all directions and all people on earth would be blessed because of his family. God said, I'm with you and will watch over you wherever you go. And Jacob woke up and said, surely the Lord is in this place. What an awesome place this is. Early the next morning, as a way to remember the place where God had um, shared his promise, Jacob poured oil over the stone where he had slept, and he renamed the place Bethel. And Jacob promised to follow God and honor him. And so we see here the Lord continuing to uphold his promises. Remember that big picture question, does God keep his promises? Yes, he always keeps his promises because he is faithful. And so he pro what he promised to Abraham, he fulfilled. What he promised to Isaac, he fulfilled. And what he's going to promise to Jacob, he will fulfill. And so now Jacob is saying, I'm going to follow you, Lord, and I'm going to obey you. I'm going to listen to what you say and what you say I'm going to do. And we know that we fall short in our sin. Like Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, they're humans too. They sin. They, don't, they didn't make the best choices either. Just as much as they needed Jesus and him to come save them from sins, that's as much as we need Jesus. And God is planning that. God is planning to send Jesus. It might take much longer as we're going through Abraham's story, but God is going to fulfill what he promised. And so at Bethel, God showed that his plan was to continue the covenant through Jacob's family and eventually a whole nation, leading to the birth of Jesus and the promised Savior. And so God is working it out. He is the master of all plans. He's the creator and he is king and he knows what's good for his people. He knew what was good for Isaac and Jacob and their families and he knows what's good for us. And so our memory verse is Genesis 28, 15. And it says, Look, I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go. I will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I have done what I promised you. I promised you. And you see here that this is what God is saying to Jacob. And this is just shows us God's character, that he promised that he would be with Jacob and he would fulfill the things he's done. And that's the God we get to serve. A God who's faithful and a God who says, hey, when I say something to you, I'm going to do it. And I love you. And that's some great stuff. And so Jesus was, would come down this family line and he would be for us to save us from our sins. And we get the opportunity to enter into that relationship with him. And so that's something you haven't thought about before. Maybe think of a friend or a family member that you know that knows Jesus and ask some questions about it. Hey, this promised Savior, this person who is continuing to be promised, um, to God's people, who is he? He is Jesus and he loves you. And by his death and resurrection, we get to enter into a relationship with God and restore that. Um, God, Jesus restores that brokenness, that sin that we had, so that we can have eternal life with him. And that's some good stuff. And that's a promise that the Lord has fulfilled in all those lives of the people who have trusted Jesus as their Savior. And so that's some good truths, friends. And we have a toolbox right after. If you want to ask your parents or someone who's nearby you on after the video, and if you click on it, it talks about our memory verse, our point, our big picture question, and it dives deeper into what the story we just talked about. And I encourage you to read the text this week with your family. Okay? So let's go ahead and pray, and then I'll let you go ahead and look at that toolbox. We have Lord, just thank you again for showing us that you keep your promises. God, you are good. You are our creator, our king, our father. And we see here that you fulfill what you say, Lord. And that Jacob could trust you, Lord. And he promised to obey you, God. And the Lord, even when we fall short and we choose things that aren't worthy or, or we give into sin and it's against you, God, you still love us and you're still faithful. And we see that as you sent Jesus to us, Lord that you gave Jesus as our Savior for our lives to cover our sins and so that we could enter into a relationship with you. What good news, Father, that we get to have that with you because there's nothing here on earth, Lord, that will ever amount to having a relationship with you, Lord. And I ask that our friends see that, Lord, that they see that you are, your goodness and who you are is better than anything of this world, Lord. And I ask that you just have their hearts to continue to seek after you, Lord, and your truths and what you say. And I ask that you be with our friends throughout the week and you be with us and just thank you. And may we not take these, may we take these truths and apply it in our lives, God. And just thank you for all you do. And may your kingdom come. In Jesus' name, amen.